Welcome to EE206 Circuits 1, lecture number 4, Voltage and Current Division. Now, the idea behind voltage and current division is that given a circuit like this, the voltage at the output will be less than the input voltage. And I can see that just by conservation of voltage. The voltage across R2 plus the voltage across R1 has to add up to Vn. So V out is less than or equal to Vn. Voltage division says I can calculate how much less it is just by looking at the resistors. And to see that, what I could do is find the current. The current is Vn divided by R2 plus R1. The output voltage is R1 times I, which substituting is R1 times R1 over R plus R2 times Vn. That's voltage division. This is the percentage of Vn that you see at V out, is what you're measuring. R1 divided by the total. And a lot of times people kind of get the order backwards. Think of it this way. Suppose R1 is 0 ohms. If R1 is 0 ohms, I should get 0 volts out because I times R, anything times 0 is 0. If I have R1 in the numerator and R1 is 0, I'm going to get 0. So it's what you're measuring divided by the total. That's voltage division. As an example, suppose I had this circuit. If I want to find the voltage at the output, what I would do is take what I'm measuring, 610,000 ohms, divided by the total, 610k plus 1 meg, that times 13.2 volts, and I get 5 volts out. That also works the other way around. Suppose I had a car battery, and I want to drop the voltage down to 5 volts. One way to do that is to use the voltage divider. Here I've got one equation, two unknowns. I know the output is 5 volts, but I've got two unknowns, R1 and R2. So let's pick one arbitrarily. Let's make this 1 meg. Then I can solve for R1. I know that the voltage division, R1 over R1 plus R2, is the drop in voltage, 5 over 13.2. Solve for R1, and you get 610k. Now, that's one use of voltage dividers. I can reduce the voltage. A uh, thing to note about this, though, is this is a voltage divider that works as long as you don't use it. If I connect this to a load, then essentially I've added a resistor in parallel with the 610k, change that resistance, and I change the voltage. So this is a way to convert 13.2 volts down to 5 volts, providing you don't use it, or in other words, RL is much, much larger than 610K. Where voltage division is used is potentiometers. This is what a potentiometer looks like. It's a resistive wire going around a coil and a center tap. This is called a wiper. As I turn the wiper, which is the knob that you turn on a potentiometer, as I turn the wiper, I short out a different spot on the potentiometer. And what that does for you is two things. It can be a variable resistor. To measure the resistance from this lead to the center tap, it goes from 0 ohms all the way up to the maximum as I turn it. I can use it as the variable voltage. If I apply 10 volts on this side, 0 volts on this side, as I turn the wiper, the center tap will go from 10 volts to 5 volts to 0 volts. It's a variable voltage. It's also got a third use. It's a gain. If I pick this side tied to ground, I have an audio signal coming on the top side. The wiper's over here. I've got 100% of the audio signal. 3 quarters, half, 1 quarter, 0. That's the volume on your stereo. The symbol for potentiometer is this. It's a squiggle line. That's the resistor. Plus an arrow. That arrow is the center tap. It signifies I can tap off anywhere between 100% 50% to 0% of the potentiometer. Now the different uses of it. Again, as mentioned, it's a gain adjustment. Take your input signal, tie it to one side of the potentiometer, tie the other side to ground, then the wiper will give you anywhere between 100% of the input signal to half to zero as you turn the wiper. When you do that, I have to worry about loading. If there is no loading, and it's a linear pot, the output voltage will be proportional, 100%, 50%, 0%. If I have a little bit of loading over here, say what I connect it to, draw some current, I can model that with a resistor. Essentially what I have is this 10K is in parallel with the resistance on this side of the pot. That's called loading. What that does is on the wipers all the way at the top, I've got 100%. All the way at the bottom, I've got 0%. In the middle, it won't be 50% anymore. 
because this is in parallel with the resistor for the potentiometer, I drop the resistance, which will drop the voltage. That's called loading. You can calculate that. If I have a linear pot, so let's have A go from 0 to 1 as we go up and down, the resistance on the bottom side, that's R1, will be A times R. R2 is the remainder, 1 minus A times R. If there is no loading, if this isn't there, I got the output voltage is just A times Vn. It's linear in A. If I now add a load, it's going to be the lower side is your R1 in parallel with 10K. And then my voltage division, it'll be that parallel combination divided by R1 plus R2. And you can plot that in MATLAB. If I have the loading going from from infinity, no loading, gives you a straight line. Uh, next line is 10 times. If the resistance that I'm loading it with is 10 times the resistance of the pot, this does drop a little bit, not a whole lot. This is three times and one time. And you can see that it's no longer a linear pot. The voltage droops as you turn the, the pot. I can use the pot as a variable resistor. And there's kind of two ways to do that. I can take the center tap, tie it to one end, and then as I turn the pot back and forth, the resistance from the left end to the wiper goes between zero ohms to the rating of the wiper. Say if it's a 1K pot, go from zero to 1K. Uh, I could also take the wiper and short it to the top end. The reason you do that is as you turn the pot back and forth, eventually the wiper is going to break. When it breaks, it's an open circuit. It's up to you, the engineer, to decide what should happen when the wiper does break. If I do it this way, I'll go from, say, in this case, 500 ohms. When it burns out, I'm now at 1,000 ohms. If I don't have this connection, it goes from 500 ohms to infinity. It's up to you, the engineer, which is better. Do I want to fail to infinite ohms or fail to 1,000 ohms? That's voltage division. There's also current division. If I have current going between two resistors in parallel, the current's going to split. Some will go through R1, some will go through R2. That's current division. To find the relationship, what I do is find the total current. That'll be um, or make that find the total voltage. The voltage will be the total current times the resistors in parallel. Resistors in parallel are 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 inverted. So that's the total voltage. The current through R1 then is just V1 over R1. So it's 1 over R1 times this current. And pulling the 100 milliamps outside, pulling this left, what you get is that I1 is 1 over the resistance that I'm measuring divided by the total emittance. 1 over R1 is it plus 1 over R2. The current through R2 is 1 over R2 divided by 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So in series for voltage division, it's what I'm measuring divided by the total resistance. 1 over R is actually called admittance. And for current division, it's the admittance of what I'm measuring divided by the total admittance. As an example, if I make this 100 ohms, 200 ohms, 100 milliamps coming in, then the current I1 will be 1 over 100 divided by the total admittance times the current coming in, 66 milliamps. I2 will be 1 over 200 times the total admittance or divided by the total admittance, 33 milliamps. And note that I1 plus I2 is, I, is the total, 100. Also note, the current prefers going through the lower resistance. The branch with the lowest resistance gets the most of the current. If this became 0 ohms, then all the current goes through R1. Do one more example in parallel. If I have these, this circuit, find the current through R1. It'll be what I'm measuring, 1 over R1, divided by the total emittance times the input. And that gives you 54.5 milliamps. And again, to show you how an HP calculator is useful, let's solve for this one. Find the current using current division. So it's going to be 1 over 100 divided by the total emittance. 
It's going to push that on the stack a couple times. That takes 200 inverse, add that to 100 inverse. 300 inverse, add that up. So this is the numerator, 1 over 100. Here's the denominator, 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200 plus 1 over 300. Take the ratio, it's that percentage of 100 milliamps, 54.5 milliamps. So that's voltage and current division, lecture number four for E206, circuits one.